sometimes you'll create a piece and you look at it when it's finished and you're just so proud of it, you think, I don't think I could ever do anything better than this. And then the years go by and you've got a broader skill set and much more sort of techniques under your belt. And you look at it and think, oh man, I want to redo that. I did the exact same thing with my Labelle Supreme piece. Here's a picture of the original one. And at the time I was so proud of it. And then if you want to see the reworked version, I'll put a link to that up here because I made a full workshop. It's about an hour and 20 minutes long of how to make that piece from scratch. But in this video, what I'm going to be doing is revamping the old piece. So that's going to cover some techniques and some tools that we've used before, but maybe go in a bit more depth on just a few little bits. But before we crack on, if you're a fan of reverse glass, sign painting, gold leaf, digital processes and much more, then you're in the right place because that's all this channel's about and I try to release a video every couple of weeks. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. I reward my patrons with a different vector design every month. I credit them in the videos early access to the videos, and also just upload bits and bobs to my Patreon page as sort of freebies. If that's too much of a commitment and you'd rather just buy me a pint, there's a link to my PayPal me where you can just put in an amount and then you can sort of contribute to my ever-growing beer belly. As well as that, there's a link to my Etsy shop where I'm selling some of my designs and the Happy Guild of Facebook group where we're over 600 strong now, all helping each other out. Some really good artists on there sharing work and asking for advice. So anyway, that out of the way, let's crack on with it. Okay, so before we crack on, let's have a look at this piece and what we want to fix on it. So, I have this big panel of solid black and I've managed to remove most of that and what I did was uh, soaked it with cellulose thinner or lacquer thinner if you're in the US. Uh, I've put a tutorial on that up in the top right corner as well, that's in my tips and tricks video. But the black's mostly come off, but I'm not too fussed because I am actually going to still use black on this background, I'm just going to make it a bit more ornate. Now, around here, where I kind of stripped that off, I was using a toothbrush to try and get some of this gold paint off and couldn't, and I've taken some of the silver in off. That's something we're going to need to repair. That's happened in a few places. You can see on the edge there, that's not looking too good. Um, looking at some of the letters, like this C, that could have come off in the chipping. I can't remember, it was a while ago, but they're you know, going to have to do some intricate painting on that bit and then some laying some leaf. Overall... The main issue I'm going to have, although I say issue, it might not be, is that I couldn't, this was Krylon looking glass, not silver leaf, and I just couldn't get it off. Like usually the lacquer thinner will dissolve it, but it's right in some of these cracks. So it's when you hold it up to the light, it looks fine, but you can sort of see in some of these bits, they're still quite thick on there. And I've gone in there with the lacquer thinner and a toothbrush and scrubbed it, but just can't get it out. So that's going to be a bit trial and error to see what that looks like. I couldn't get all this gold paint out and it started to sort of wear away the silver, so I'm going to try and match this gold paint and then just paint the letters and, and kind of gild the rest. But that's it really. It looks all right from afar. It looks a bit of a mess from up close, but I think it's going to look really good when I'm finished. Well, I hope it does anyway. Right, so before I get started, I want to make sure I'm giving myself the best chance of this looking, you know, nice and sparkly and hasn't got any kind of residue from me cleaning off the paint and the Krylon looking glass. So you can see here there's some sort of smears of, of that sort of Krylon and that's sort of how that will appear on the glass without you even knowing it. So I want to kind of clear that off and the best way to do that is with acetone or nail polish remover. So just going to, uh, using some kitchen roll. Get a bit on there. And then it's just a case of going over these areas. So let's just start here. You can see that's removing that from the blue, so that'll also be removing that from the glass. I might not be able to get all of it, you know, because it's difficult, it's going to be in cracks and stuff like that, but, you know, I really want to kind of polish this off to make sure and get as much of it off as possible. You can see that's definitely coming off now. So what I'm going to do is kind of just repeat this process over the whole thing until I'm happy that, yeah, I've got all of it off really. And then we can move on to kind of the more decorative processes. Alright, 
Okay, so that's looking pretty clean now. Um, I haven't managed to remove all of the Krylon, but I have managed to remove anything that would have been like Krylon residue, which just looks murky. So it will have the kind of mirrored flex to it, but I think that'll look fine. Whether we gild it with 12 karat white gold or 23 karat gold, I think that'll look nice either way. Now, I've had a bit of a change of heart. This whole area was solid black. I was thinking about doing something that would, you know, allow me to kind of be a bit lazy and leave some of these little bits of black on here. But I've decided against it. I'm revamping this piece. I want to completely revamp it, make it new. So these little bits of black here are things where I've had this soaking in cellulose thinner. I've been scrubbing it away with a toothbrush. And these are just, you know, those last little bits that are stuck on. So what I'm going to do is remove them with a knife. And um, not too sharp, so one that maybe I probably can't see that, but it's just had the kind of very pointy tip snapped off. And then I can kind of just get into these areas here and then start just scraping that off. And it might seem like a, a bit laborious, but once you get going, this is a quick job. There's hardly any of it really, you know, but I just, I don't want to go um, with the same colour scheme that I had before. I've managed to get all that black off these letters. So I'm just thinking something maybe a little bit lighter with some creamy colours and stuff like that. So... What I'm going to do is just go around and then as they come off, you can just use a brush and kind of, you know, brush them away from the piece. And yeah, I'm just going to go over the whole thing now, just doing that. And um, then we will get started on the actual fun stuff. Okay. Okay, so that's all the boring stuff done. I'm going to move on to the first part of redecorating this piece. And what I'm going to use is a product that I've used before on this channel. And it's um, to sort of generate a crackle effect that I've used it before to sort of make an antique effect. But here I'm going to use it to kind of produce a gold vein throughout the backing scroll. So this is from a UK company called Polyvine. I'm pretty sure you can order it worldwide. Or if not, I'm sure there's an alternative. But what I'm going to do is just apply the base coat to all of the areas around the letters on this sort of top scroll. Now, the thing about this thing is it's largely unpredictable. You're going to paint it on and then leave it to dry and then paint the other coat on and it will crack. Now, it's not going to crack all over. It's not going to crack evenly, but I think that adds to the kind of charm of it and makes it look a bit more authentic. So what I'm going to do is give this a little shake. <coughs> and this is the base coat that's going on first. And where I can, I apply it quite thick. Oh, that's fucking stuck. <coughs> So you can see it's what is sort of like is a diluted PVA glue type texture and it goes on white but then it dries clear. So what I'm going to do is just paint this over it and then wait for it to dry to apply the other coat. Right, so this has been drying for about an hour and a half now. And I've just slipped a bit of black vinyl under there. And that's because as it dries, it will make the glass transparent. And it's obviously easier to see the kind of white stuff fade out against black than it is against the lighter surface. So see, there's still a few little white spots here and there, so that's not quite dry. When I say dry, this will maintain a tiny bit of tack. So don't sit there waiting for hours and hours on end or even days and think that it's not drying. 
that's fine when it's kind of tacky to the touch. And then what we can do then is apply the top coat in exactly the same way as we apply the base coat. Now, I've loosened this up ready so I don't have the same problems as last time. And what I'm going to do is set up the camera down low. I'll do it on a time lapse while I paint the rest and then I'll leave it to dry. And hopefully that time lapse will catch that kind of crackle as it kind of develops. Right, so now we're ready to apply some gold leaf. So I'll just show you how that crackle came out. I hope this light shines it up and doesn't just blow it out, but it's come out really good. In fact, it's the best result I've ever had with that. Usually I end up with some sort of blank patches where it doesn't crackle, but every single bit is done. So onto the gilding. So what I've got here is half a pint of distilled water and two diamonds of leaf gelatin. When I say leaf gelatin, I mean this stuff. Um, it comes in like little diamonds and two diamonds to half pint of distilled water heated up in the microwave for two and a half minutes or until just before it boils. Got some petroleum jelly which I'm going to put directly onto the tip in this case because I'm using this which is a thorn tip and um, this is designed specifically to pick you up for picking up whole gold leaves. So I'll just put that directly on there, not too thick. I might be a bit thick there, but no, that's good. I've got my gilder's knife just in case I need to chop up any gold leaf, but for now I don't think I'm going to, so I'll just put that aside. Right. So let's just get a leaf. So this is 23 carat gold leaf. That's what I always use. Um, you can go up to 24 carat, but I've never used it, but I've been told it's really, really delicate and, and very, well, much more difficult to use and you don't kind of get much more benefits from it. So look how easy that is to pick up a whole leaf. Just pop it on there. So now what I'm gonna do, give this a good mix to make sure that leaf gelatin has kind of dissolved completely into the water. And I'm just going to paint this on up here. Not perfect, but it'll do for now. So just repeat that process. I always have trouble laying the first leaf and getting these things with. My shaky hands is also problematic. But look at that, it's just so easy. That's a bit cleaner, isn't it? Look at that, not perfect. A few little cracks in there, but that doesn't actually matter because of what I'm planning on doing with this. So what I'm going to do is gild the rest of this in a time lapse, and then we'll move on to making sure those cracks really stand out. Right, so here I have finished, and unfortunately I started filming doing the bit to reveal the cracks, but it was on time lapse, so that isn't gonna work as something. So I'm just gonna to have to go from this point. Now what I'm using is just standard baby wipes. So no nothing like kitchen wipes with anything chemically in, and just gently rubbing away the gold. And from the raised surfaces, that will come off easily, and from the cracks, it'll be a little bit more difficult, although not impossible. So you don't want to spend too much time rubbing over each surface because I do want to retain, you know, the gold in those cracks more so than anywhere else. 
put a little bit of black vinyl under it just to kind of, you know, show what, well, just to see what I'm doing. And just sort of moving around the whole piece. And then you can see these lovely sort of 23 karat gold cracks that I'm then going to use a kind of, I don't know, I haven't decided what colour paint yet, but certainly going to paint over that so that that will just look like a sort of antique kind of gold effect. But what I'll do is do the rest of this in a time lapse and then we'll move on to the painting. Right, so that's that finished. Now, it takes quite a few of these and just make sure you kind of alter the position that you're not just going to go with one bit because you'll end up with gold all over it and you'll be smearing it into other bits. So work gently, then just work around, sort of moving it to a clean bit on your finger, nice and tight. And you're not rubbing hard because this gap isn't deep and it's not sharp either. So if I was just to rub as hard as I could, I'd just rub everything away. So it's kind of really firm and taut on there and just gently rubbing it and then you'll end up with this and what i'm going to do now is paint it and just to make a change last time it was black i'm going to go with something really light and sort of pastely i'm going to go with chamois so i'm just going to start painting this and i've kind of put some clear enamel on the back of the letters so that's all good that's sealed now so i can just start painting over this so Oh, that's quite thick. There we go. Just putting that on. And what I'll do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to pop this up against the side. I'll change the camera angle so that you can see the paint going on and then kind of see how that looks you know, with the gold sort of shining through with this nice coloured paint. All right. Okay, so I've finished up the paint in there, and then I've done a little bit of extra work as well. Now, where I had gilded this top bit, when I looked at it on the other side, I was like, oh man, it looks so nice. It is a shame to sort of rub it away just to create the crackle effect, but it's a tutorial. I wanted to show that technique, but I thought I'm going to use that kind of gilded crackler. Crackler? Is that him? I don't even know if that's how you say it. Um, on these letters. So what I did, Exactly the same as what I did up the top here, which is paint the base coat, wait for it to dry, paint the top coat, wait for that to dry, gild it, two layers of gold, push it in. I then backed that up with enamel, waited for that to dry, and then just rubbed it away with a wet wipe. And here's where we're at so far. So, top bit. So I think this, this top bit just looks so nice with the lights off. You've got that sort of really nice sort of antique type effect of the crack paint. As soon as the lights are on, beautiful kind of gold veins running all through it. And then there's the Havana Cigars lettering, which equally I just think it looks so nice and stands out lovely on this. The reason I didn't film that process is because it is identical to how I'd sort of gilded this top bit. So I didn't want to just kind of waste time in the video for the sake of it. What I'm going to do now is just move on to painting the centre circle or the sort of ornate bits around it. I'm going to use a metallic gold paint. 
I'll do that as a time lapse because, you know, there's nothing special about the technique for doing that. I'll then continue the time lapse to paint all of this text at the bottom. And then I'll come back um, and, and discuss how we're going to kind of repair the sort of bits of silver that have been removed when I was sort of being quite rough, removing the sort of old paint job. So let's crack on with that. Right, so I'm now going to move on to repairing the little bits that I messed up when I stripped it. So firstly, let's take a look at this centre bit. Now, there's a huge chunk of silver out of here, and there's a reason for that, and it's not because I kind of scrubbed it with a toothbrush, it's because I made this ages ago and I didn't know about the technique of using a kind of clear gloss enamel to make sort of frosted glass clear. So my way of going about it was to just cane it with super glue and stick a bit of glass on the back. Over time, that just kind of all the glue started breaking and it just looked terrible. So the window didn't work. I heated it up to pull it off. When I pulled it off, it pulled a load of the silver off. Um, there are sort of other bits. Let's go up to the top here. So you can see that's where they kind of, yeah, I've just scrubbed too hard. And they're visible as well around the top of this circle and in numerous other parts of this. There was a bit earlier, let's have a look. Yeah, the sort of C here where I've kind of, you know, taken the silver out of that. But but th th that's all going to be fine. And I'm not going to re-silver this because for those who are new to the channel, this started as a mirror. And the link I put at the beginning of the video is what I'd advise you to watch if you want to make this from scratch. I start off with a mirror and I sandblast the bits away that I don't want to keep. Now, a mirror is chemically silvered. I'm not going to be silver in this. Um, and the reason for that is because silver leaf tarnishes. You know, this, the, chemical, the chemical silvering process is it's chemically silvered. There's then copper put over the back. There's then a kind of mirror backing paint which has got kind of well it used to have lead in i don't know if it still has but it's pretty hardy you can't acid etch to it or anything so that seals it in but still even over time you look at kind of old mirrors and they'll have sort of the foxing spots where they start to oxidize and stuff so what i'm going to use is white gold leaf and use 12 carat white gold leaf and i'm not going to do anything different in technique when it comes to kind of laying the leaf on this but Ordinarily, in my videos, I tend to kind of be laying leaf on areas that are textured, like the kind of cracked areas or the glue chipped areas or something. But if you lay this on clear glass, it will go like a mirror finish. You've got to make sure you clean that glass and you've got to make sure you burnish the gold. So in an area like this, I would be using a Q-tip with some glass cleaner and make sure that was completely clean and you know squeaky clean and then water gilding it with 12 karat white gold leaf. When that dries, burnishing it with cotton wool on the back and then burn, uh, gilding it again. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be gilding the rest of this piece with 12 karat white gold leaf. And there isn't really gonna be any technique that I do differently in terms of gilding a glue chipped area and there is of gilding an area that needs repairing. So I will do the rest as a time lapse, but then when it comes to actually kind of focusing on this area, I'll come back and sort of just explain the process of how we maintain that edge and then get this to a kind of, you know, that'll be our window for the photograph. So back to the time lapse and then, yeah, come back to that when that's done. So that's all the gold leaf applied. And what I've done is painted over it with clear gloss enamel. And that's because if you paint over it with a color, there's so many little nooks and crannies when you're glue chipping 
that if, for example, I painted this with black, you'd turn it over and then you'd just see little black sort of veins running throughout it. So I always do it with clear enamel. Now, I haven't done anything around here. So I'm just going to use this. I mean, you can use clear enamel. I'm just going to use the gold because this area is painted in gold. And if it seeps through, it, wasn't, it won't matter. So what I'm doing here is, let me just move this. I can see the line I need to follow because this leaf in the middle here needs to go because I need to put a photo in there. But to do that, I need to seal it so that I can rub it away. So all I'm going to do is, it's using this brush, you know, you can apply this really thickly and it's only really around the edge where you've got to be quite um, accurate. I'm just using, watching the edge of your brush, making sure that doesn't go out the lines. That's what I'm doing, just kind of sealing that in. And this enamel overnight will go hard and then that will mean that this area that I've applied the gold leaf to in the centre of this will just easily rub away and don't have to really be careful about doing it. So, just going to go around this whole thing. And, you know, I've, this isn't something you're probably going to, this probably isn't something you're going to encounter. You know, I made the mistake of gluing a bit of glass to the centre of this piece and when I removed it, it pulled a load of the mirror coating with it. So it's quite a unique scenario, but there are going to be times when you will be revamping an old piece or working on a current piece where you might just chip away a, a, a bit of leaf or a bit of silver if it's an existing mirror. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a good tip to know because white gold does have a mirror finish and it doesn't tarnish. You know, it's um, yeah, it's just a sort of, well, I, I think it's a better alternative to silver. You know, I know the mirrors are chemically silvered and backed up to protect them. But if you were to just lay silver leaf, because you haven't got, or probably haven't got, things like the same sort of backing up qualities as, as a mirror manufacturer, like the copper leaf, like the sort of lead style paint. You know, if you just lay silver leaf and then back it up with enamel, it's not quite the same, you know, and, and then you'll end up with kind of tarnished spots that... Um, in some cases will look good if you look at if you're going for that effect but on a piece like this i'm not i want this to be as pristine as i can get it so i'm using white gold because it won't tarnish right okay right so nearly there just get one of the wet wipes and doing exactly the same just going to kind of rub away the areas that I haven't sealed with the enamel. That will go do it quite sort of haphazard first and then get sort of a bit more intricate in there maybe with the tip of my finger rather than the flat of my finger. So. Go and that's coming off really nicely and making that sharp line. <laughs> okay, last thing to do is to turn that frosted area in the center into a clear window so I can mount a photo in there. And the way I do that is with clear gloss lacquer, just to give it a thin coat. And there you have it. That's pretty much it. Just going to get that photo mounted in there, get it framed up, and that's that. And here's the finished piece. So for the first time, this isn't just a video for the sake of making a video. This is a tribute piece. It's to a lovely man who was taken far too soon. It's my wife's uncle, Keith. Such a good old boy, and this is in his memory. I think it's come out lovely. It's one of my favourite pieces I've ever made. Love all the techniques in it. And 
La Belle Supreme translates to the Supreme Beauty, which I think is apt for such a nice tribute. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon. And please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.